Welcome back to the Bit by Bit podcast. In today's episode, I'm joined by Didi Taihutu. Didi is well known in the Bitcoin space. Didi and his family, the Bitcoin family, travel the world living only on Bitcoin and teaching others about this amazing technology. A few years ago, Didi and his family sold their home and all their possessions to travel and live on Bitcoin. Didi is joining me today from Thailand. Although the sound quality isn't perfect, I really enjoyed this one, and I think you'll learn a lot. Didi has such an interesting outlook on life, and it's amazing to speak to someone who's been so heavily involved for such a long time. All of us in this space obviously believe in this technology, but for an entire family to put their full faith into it is quite something. Today we talk about a wide range of topics, We talk travel, homeschooling, Bitcoin, finance, government, ayahuasca, and much, much more. As I said, the sound quality isn't perfect, but I think you're really going to get something out of this one, and I hope you enjoy. That's better. That's much better. So, you're joining me from beautiful Thailand. How is it? Uh, Like, Thailand is amazing. It's a beautiful place. Uh, You know, I enjoy the sunset every night. It's... uh, the food is is healthy. It's it's a warm climate. It's uh, the people are nice. Yeah, we just as a family, we just love Thailand. Yeah, up there is one of your favorites. Then I think Thailand is one of the favorites. Indonesia is one of the favorites. Thailand, it, yeah, it's it's always Asia. I don't know what the people just smile a little bit more. The people are just a little bit more friendly and just laid back. Yeah, it's it was my first time to Asia last year. We went to Langkawi. And that was the best holiday we've ever had. And the same reason, just the people are so nice. Also, the nature was amazing. It's just absolutely beautiful over there. The nature is beautiful. You can make an adventure of every day, you know, and the kids, they get bored when you travel that long. So you need to make adventures because else uh, the digital nomad traveling life is also (laughs) very boring. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, I bet. You, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, any of my listeners, I think everyone will know who you are and what you're doing, but the digital nomad traveling, how many years is it you've been doing it? And what is it that led you down that path, Didi? Because it sounds like the life that we all wish to lead and sounds like you're living the dream, but I'm sure, I'm sure it doesn't come easy in other ways. Yeah. You know what it is? It's like we, we started in 2016. Um, and, and there is always a happening in your life that leads to, uh, to a different step that you need to take in life. Uh, some people don't take that step and they get very depressive and all that stuff. And I, because I lost my mother when she was 48 years old, and then in wow. 2014, um, my father heard he had cancer and just one more year to live. So, you know, I, I, at that point, I was this materialistic person that was still running a hamster wheel and making as much as possible money to become a millionaire because that was what school taught me that then if I would be a millionaire and had a house and some cars and some bikes and all the other luxury stuff, I would become happy. So during that way, my father gets sick and uh, we, I hired a manager to run the companies. I, and then um, I just, you know, spent all the last moments in life with your father, you know, the last Christmas, last Easter, all the last things you want to do. And in mm-hmm. January 2016, after a year, he, he dies. And then, you know, then you get the funeral and you get the, all that stuff and the insurance and the inheritance and all that thing. And at that point, we still had my companies and everything. And it was just too much. So I was struck by a huge burnout, which made me decide, okay, I need to reset that. Um, and I, would, I knew from the backpacking life we had, like a few times when we were younger, let's, let's just go to Asia and, 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 you know, mentally and physically reset. So we did. And we agreed on three months. And... You know, in those three months, I already noticed after two, three weeks, wow, this, I am getting back my energy and getting back the, the lust of life and all that stuff. And I was really enjoying my kids and my wife and just spending the time with them because, you know, the, the years before I was just a plain workaholic and, you know, you don't spend the time you should spend with your kids and your wife. So that, it must, it changed. yeah. It's so it was a wake up call for you, really. It was, it was a wake up call that I, you know, even if I would have had billions of dollars, I would not mm. have been able to save my father or my mother, you know, neither. They, they just died. And so that was for me a wake up call. Okay, Didi, you're now late 30s. Your mother was 48. Your father is 61. 
you know, mm. either way, if I was going to die in that age, I wanted to have lived my life instead of just living this, or running this hamster wheel in, in an office where you, um, yeah, you pretend to be somebody because of the ego you have and, you know, you, but it doesn't make you internally happy. So no. we just needed to change. We just needed to change. Time's the ultimate currency, isn't it? That's the only thing you never can buy back. You can buy back all the materialistic stuff you want, but you can never buy back time. So it's uh, for us, it became the ultimate currency. Yeah, even more important than Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Well, even Bitcoin can't buy time, can it? <laughs> no, that's the only thing it can't. No. no. Yeah. Maybe when the when the number goes up, then it buys you some more time because you don't have to work so much. But it can never take back time. Nothing, Nothing. can. No, that's uh, that's one lesson we learned, and um, you know, and, and then you just change, uh, or you don't change, and you keep running, and, mm. or, or you just understand and listen to your body, and you understand, okay, you need to change, and that's what we did, and and, and during that change, you know, I, I met these people on the beach again, and it started talking about Bitcoin, and at, on a certain moment in Bali. This friend of mine calls me and he's like, Didi, do you still own your Bitcoins and your Doe coins? Do you still have them? I say, yeah, man, but I'm on the beach. I'm <laughs> enjoying the sunset. I have a Bagari Coke. My kids are playing. I'm, I, I, I'm not going to touch a laptop or, or check the Bitcoins. <laughs> he kept persuading me, man, check them, check them. So in the evening, we checked them and we saw that, you know, Bitcoin was slowly going up. It was already around $800 at that point or something. And, and we were like, wow. You know, when I started reading up in the in, in the internet again, and I saw the community growing, and I saw all the things that I believed in in 2013 already when I had my companies, I started mining bitcoins. So I had experience with bitcoins, but because of the crash in 2014, you know, I lost all the trust in it. I was like, "Yep, that's uh, <laughs> that was a good yeah. uh, that was a good try, but we lost some money there." And <laughs> yeah, and now certainly this community was growing again, and um, yeah, which, which made my wife and I just discuss live and how we were happy with just the traveling with a few backpacks and no materialism. And then we just decided, let's go home. Let's sell everything we have and invest it in Bitcoin and let's see what happens. But very ballsy. <laughs> <laughs> very, very ballsy. But it's it, paid off, it sounds. Um, you know what it is? It seems ballsy to people um, that... Um, that are still running after money, you know, but if, if money doesn't, isn't that important anymore to you, then it's not that big of a bet, you know, That's because true. you, you can always rely on the knowledge in your head, on, on, on your talents or whatever. And if, if, if this bet goes wrong, just start over again, just as you, like you finished school, you started, you search a job, you find this new job, you, you just start working, you make some, a living and then after three months you go to a bank and you say can i get a mortgage again and you buy a house again and it's it's what is the bet you know it's, it's true just fear. it's just a fear that people can never get back what um what they gave up and, and was it was it for you when you started learning about bitcoin and you started to understand it could you see straight away that this could be the revolution that i and i think most people on our bitcoin twitter envisage or was it just you thought you know this is something that's going to make money and or did you straight away just go wow this can change the world now during the period in 2013 that i started mining it was just for me to become uh, filthy rich because that was yeah. the thing that this guy told me if you start mining bitcoins you can become a millionaire and at that point in life i was still you know, running after uh, <laughs> after becoming a millionaire. So yeah. that, that that is why I started. Of course, I understood the revolution, and it, but for me at that point, it was becoming rich and disrupting the banking system. Nothing okay. else. Okay. Yeah. You no, know, and 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 then during the time afterwards, you 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 educate yourself by reading up and the forums and everything, and then you start to understand how big the social economic shift will be after mm. because of Bitcoin. And then you will understand that it's now able for anybody in the world just to send and receive one euro with a telephone without anyone stopping you, you know, without anyone being able to stop you. And, and, and then you, then you understand the power of Bitcoin. Then you understand that what happened in Greece and in Cyprus in 2014, you know, the, the, the bank accounts from poor people that got frozen or that were limited to get 60 euros every day. That can never happen to Bitcoin. 
So because of all those economic strange things that happened in that period, you know, you get you get education, and then you understand the real need, and 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 then you yeah, then then you shift from your opinion of just becoming a millionaire to wow, this is really going to um, this is really going to change the world, and it is changing the world. It already has changed the world. It is, yeah. It it feels like it's still such early stages, but. To the people who understand, I think we can we can see where this could go, and it's going to be massive. It's just going to be, and it's exciting for me. I just feel every day when I'm involved in this. Yeah, you know, if you make money, it's lovely, but to be involved in something that can change the world in a positive way, I think when I'm on my deathbed, I think I've been involved in something that was important, and and that's the most exciting bit. To be involved in changing the world in a positive way, yeah, and, and that that is exactly what it's doing. And 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 of course, the media at first saw it not that positive, but that's the same thing the media said in the nineties about the internet. You know, that would mm. not be a positive change. That would just be for money laundering, and that would just be for sex and online, um, you know, all that stuff. And and and, and mm. during the time. Everybody understood that the internet was not going anywhere, and it be- became the most important thing in life. You know, nobody can even live almost without the internet anymore. You know, no telephone will work, no iPhone will work. We won't be making a Zoom call. You know, it's yeah. all that, that that all changed in like twenty, thirty years. So yeah. now we have this new revolution of blockchain. You know, which is also comparable with the change the internet made. Now we have blockchain. And one of the products is Bitcoin. And we mm-hmm. have been now in the first 10 years. And so the next 10, 20 years will make the same sh- you know, shift that the internet made in 30 years. People will understand. Yeah, and that absolutely. Is, yeah, and, and, and it's, it's, it's really important that people understand that it's not going to happen in one day. You know, just I, I always compare it with my grandparents, you know, you, they were used to go into this bank building and then they were used to ask this cashier for money and then they signed this paper, you know, and then they received the money. And then suddenly this, this bank tells those old people at that point, now you need to go with this plastic card into this machine and you can get money. It took it took minimal five years, I think, for my grandparents to trust that machine, you know. They always just mm. went simply into this building to get their cash. And now those people are asked to understand this digital <laughs> revolution of money. So yeah. that will take that will take time. But you know, the youngsters, your if you have kids, your kids, my kids, you know, they un- understand already what a digital currency is. They play game. They earn tokens. They sell tokens. They sell avatars for tokens. You know, for them it's yeah. just a normal. It's thing. natural. It's natural. Yeah. They are growing up with it. They won't it's know natural. what cash money is. Nobody, no kids. They won't believe you. They, you need to take them to a. I, I, I think if the babies are born now, you need to take them to a museum to see cash money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's only eight. It is true. Only eight percent of all the money around in the world is physical cash money. It's only eight. From yeah. eight to zero is nothing. No. It's the same change. In Union made. It's the same change. We had we were proud of our Dutch guild or the Germans were proud of the Deutsche Mark. The Spanish were proud of the Peseta. It took them one month for everybody to be changed into Euro. Every vending yeah. machine, cigarette machine to accept Euro. So if they only needed one month then, you know, for uh, changing the whole world, whole Europe into accepting Euro, now they don't they don't even need to make that big of a step. Now it's no. difficult. Yeah, it will, it will be, be quick. It will be quick. It will be, in, in, I think, in now in five years' time, the, the government will send a letter to the people at home. Okay, we are, uh, we created this new digital currency, um, the Dutch Golden or the Euro, and you get one month to time to uh, transact your cash money, exchange your cash money yeah. into digital money. That's the trick. You know, that's how they get rid of all the people that have uh, still um, the cash. unlimited cash money. Mm-hmm. That's how they are going to do it. It's a, it's one big plan, in my opinion. So I would agree with that. When we go back to you're on the beach, you have your Bacardi and Coke. You're with your family. You're enjoying life, and you get you find out that you you know Bitcoin is doing what you thought it could do, and you say to your wife, "Right, I want to sell everything. 
how how did that conversation go? Because it was such a big, such a big move. Was it just both of you went right? We want to do it, or did it take some convincing? Or you know, how how did that go? How did that go? It was uh, it was on. Uh, I will never forget. It was in Simon Yak Beach, and we was really enjoying this Bacardi Coke. And I just started talking to my wife about life, you know. And and my wife mm. already was a little bit more zen always than me. I was like a little bit more happy with, with, with normal stuff. Mm -hmm. I was the one that also always needed like, you know, to top it off with the biggest bottle of Belvedere or, or a bigger car, or, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. And, and for her, it was, of course, the first reaction was like, what, all into Bitcoin, you know, those machines we sold because there was not enough profit in 2014. And well, <laughs> it, what is it exactly now what you want to do? And, but we all quickly started to, to the conversation to turn it into like, but let's do it for the kids. You know, mm -hmm. Let's not create those materialistic monsters we had mm. in the past. Let's educate our kids in becoming human beings that love to live life. And how do you do this? The only way to educate your kids and to love to live life is to lead by example. I can read a book, I can show them pictures, I can show them a movie about different style of living, but they won't believe it till you do it. They always follow their parents when they're young. So the only way we could, you know, keep our kids from becoming, let's exaggerate those materialistic monsters we were, is showing them a different way. So, and that was for my wife, the big step from like, okay, yeah, let's do it. Let's try it. Of course, <laughs> you know, it's still, it's still a big step. If you, if you, then you fly home and you still don't realize what you're going to do. And then you are put your house to sell for Bitcoins. And then you realize, oh, we have all this furniture. We're going to sell it for Bitcoins. And then you come to the most important point of the women. They have all 100 pair of shoes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need to sell yeah. your 100 pair of shoes. Then it becomes real. And at yes. that point, when it became real, it, it of course it get it, it creates a little bit of tension, you know. This is an excitement. Mm -hmm. well, are we going to push enter now? Is this all this money going to into you know cracking into Bitcoin? And then you just do it, and then you notice nothing, nothing changed. Yeah, you live on a camp spot. You went living on a camping place, and 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 I I need to say we were also lucky because at that point. The media found out, so we were bombed by the media. So you don't get the time to think about the thing you did. You just, yes, you just become part of this roller coaster in the media and interviews, and they fly from America, from Australia, from Ukraine, from all over the world. They came flying to this camp spot to film us to make interviews. So you you get in, yeah, you get into a new style of life. So you don't think about it. Did I do good? Did I do wrong? And I started mm. trading, and the bull run, everything was going up. So. It, 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 yeah, it, it just grew in a natural way into becoming this Bitcoin family. Um, and we still realized we, yeah, we, we just followed our guts, you know, our feeling, or we just felt it's time to change life. And we are happy with those two backpacks. So why, why wouldn't I change? And then, of course, you can, we, we, we discussed about, okay, if we have that money, we can put it on a bank account and then we, can keep it on this bank and we can travel a long time for of this money. But we were like, nah, that's not what we want. You know, we, we want to support this revolution. We want to show um, our kids that, that, you know, this is going to change the world. And um, so that's, yeah, it, it, it really was not that difficult with my wife. She's now sitting next to me. She's listening. Do I need to say something more? <laughs> 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 well that sounds like, it, <laughs> it's it sounds like you found the one there then that's amazing for someone to sit by your side and, and go through that because i don't think so many people would just go yep i'm going to support your dream and be part of it and i've looked on you guys website and it looks like your family is very very happy i think a lot of people can take a leaf out of that book because I like you say, it's not about money and it's not about materials. It's, uh, it's about experiences and, and spending time with your family. And it seems like you've nailed it. You know what it is? It's, I think everybody can nail it. And, I, and of course, I need, I'm very, you know, I, I realized really that, that, that I was lucky that I have a supporting wife that didn't say, oh, no, I'm not going to sell my uh, 70 pairs of shoes or I'm not going to say, you know, 
she was like, yeah, yeah. let's do it. Let's just change life and let's make it an adventure. We didn't know at that point we were still normal, a normal family with school going kids with all the stuff, you know, all the friends and all the things and all the, mm. we were a taxi club almost. I was always a taxi driver, you know, the kid, kid one get into sports, kid two go to tennis. <laughs> you know, we were running that normal life. It wouldn't have been for that step that we had this adventure now almost for four years, you know. It, it, it just became one big adventure just because one single change of mindset. Mm. That's exactly what I feel that the people are lacking at the moment. We have all been fed up in the 90s, you know, and in the 90s we are all taught to be these materialistic monsters of accumulating wealth. It's 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 just a simple mindset, button that, that you know, the wealth is not lost when you sell all the materialistic stuff. And that's what people yeah. don't understand. That's what people just don't understand. From what I can tell, you guys are trying to teach others. You're trying to spread this word that, you know, what we're talking about now. How's that being received when you're traveling and you're speaking to people and teaching people about Bitcoin? Are you finding that people are, are waking up? Yeah, we, we, we uh, definitely, definitely people are waking up. Definitely they are seeing um, what, what Bitcoin is doing now because, you know, they also follow the, the mass media news and they, you know, they also read the newspaper and then they also read that, that 40 German banks now want to be part of Bitcoin and, you know, they want to make it possible for people to buy Bitcoin with their bank account, you know. They, they, they also hear that Wall Street is now stepping into Bitcoin and they also, the NASDAQ, you know, this, so more and more people mm -hmm hear Bitcoin on a daily basis, so it's getting more easy. So the, the thing we try to educate people now is that Bitcoin is not only there to become a millionaire, you know, the, the true fundamentals of Bitcoin, nobody can ever take it from you. Everybody is allowed to use it, all those things. We, we try to educate the people on that. So it, every year it's different, but last year I think I did uh, 15 uh, speaking events from Las Vegas to Amsterdam to Spain to Turkey. Um, uh, we created 75 YouTube videos ourselves. I participated in, in about 20 other YouTube shows. I did about 20 podcasts. So we just accepted this role as Bitcoin family and, and hope that we can, you know, educate as much as most people by doing it. Because we yeah. tried, you know, we, we just tried to not accept this role. Like we were went into the beach in Thailand and we were like, nah, you're not going to talk to media. But they kept hunting us down. They even flew over to Thailand. They make a documentary there. And that was the point that we looked at each other and we said, let's just accept life, go with the flow. We, we already agreed not to say no to everything in life, but to start saying yes, yes to everything in life. And let's just see what happened, you know. And now it turned into this Bitcoin family thing. And now we are doing this tour. And, and, and it was a very busy year last year. So now we are in Thailand just for two months to, uh, to take it easy. But even mm -hmm. here, it's not possible. More to take it easy. The moment I run into this um, resort, um, all crypto people come to you and they recognize you and they want to have a chat with you. And you know, it's um, that's how it goes. That's how it goes. I guess that uh, it's maybe sometimes it's nice to have a break from it, though. It sounds like it's pretty full on for you. You know what it is? People that see the Instagram and see the videos, and you know, I, I, that's also what I want to tell the people at home. It's not only beauty when you tra live a traveling digital nomad life. You know, mm. It's a family life. We also have yeah. ups and downs. Kids have days that they are like, man, again the sunset, man, again into the sea, again into this pool. <laughs> no, we are kids. Yeah. They are the same at home. Sometimes they love life at home. Sometimes they hate it. Sometimes they have good friends. Sometimes they have bad friends. So nothing changes. The only thing what changes is that you travel and that it makes it a little bit more lighter. And to accept those ups and downs because you are watching a sunset or a palm tree, you know, or it just gives you a bit of better vibe and a better energy. Mm. Um, but, but still, it's, it's, it's not always easy. And, you know, our oldest kid is 14 and the second is 12 and the third is nine. So they, you know, they are not going to school. So you need to educate them as well. So our days are just like, just normal. Uh, not, no, not normal. <laughs> just like <laughs> we are a normal family, but crazy days are ahead every time. It's, yeah. yeah. With, the, with the schooling stuff, I mean, that must have been quite a big change for the kids. I, I assume they, they love it because I hated school. There was nothing I could think of better than walking out of those gates and never looking back. But a big change for them. 
it was a huge change and you know the, the, the that was also what made the first one and a half year pretty difficult for us because you know we we didn't only change from this materialistic family to this minimalistic family but also from a schooling family to an unschooling family and then at the same time also being bombed to this bitcoin family so there was a lot of you know yeah, things going on in our family so it was not easy for them but they are growing into it now and um they just they, they just understand that we think different about school mm -hmm. and they understand that there are moments during our travels that we educate them we visit the temple we educate them we visit an elephant we educate them we visit people in the south of france we educate them you know so um it, it's it's just that life becomes an education instead of the books but that is not always easy because as a parent you're a teacher and a parent and you know that's uh, yeah that, that's not the most easy task so now we found uh, since like uh, a month or three four five something the kids joined this uh, galileo online school and mm -hmm. uh, yeah we, we found out about it by this uh, by our mutual friend daniel yeah from daniel, daniel Prince, yeah and the kids love it they like it they check in every day a few uh, minutes like 20 minutes and then uh, this teacher teaches them stuff we can't teach them you know um and and, and that's really cool so we, we found a beautiful mix of unschooling and self-schooling and like practical life schooling and um, i think that's the the most important thing to create that it's it's a mix it's not just only classrooms and books it needs to be some meditation it needs to be some yoga it needs to be some uh, you know programming or whatever the kid loves to do and not only um what the teacher thinks the kid should love. yeah well it's real life then isn't it you know you're experiencing real life rather than stuck inside four walls and reading a textbook that's 35 years old it's uh yeah. most of it's very outdated it's uh it seems like a more more natural and real way to to learn yeah and i think people you know i think the schooling system should start to focus more on the positive things in life instead of like you know every everybody that i grew up in the netherlands was like schooled about the second world war and the first world war and all those negative experiences and i'm doing yeah. people and i'm like man educate them about the, the history that, that changed the world educate them about, about internet what did the internet change they changed the mm. whole world and, and, you know and those things are not the, the kids are just not prepared for the future, you know, the kids are prepared for the past. And that is exactly what we don't want for our kids. We want to prepare them for the future and not for the past. You know, it's, that, that's no use. The world is decentralizing. The world is changing. I don't have to own a car anymore. I can lend, you know, I can lend a car all over the world. I don't need to earn a, uh, own a bike anymore. I can get, go to every big city in the world, use an app on my iPhone, scan a bike, drive it from A to B, drop the bike there, and walk. You know, you, it's, it, you don't need to own stuff anymore in the future. And that's what you need to prepare the kids for. The world is decentralized. The world is changing. The world is changing into a decentralized sharing economy. And it's going to, on top of that, it's going to be disrupting the whole financial system into this decentralized currency system where mm -hmm. the people we are used to have that have control are, are losing a little bit of the control so we just hope that we do the the, the right thing for the kids and that we ed prepare them good for the future and, and you you never know if you do right and um, I, I don't think you can do wrong you know one kid wants to be an artist and the other one maybe wants uh, wants to become uh, you know a school teacher or whatever it's always possible everything is possible in life I think I think so. I think you're right there. So I had one question that's non-Bitcoin uh, related. I saw on your Twitter, on your bio, you have location set to Earth or Matrix. Is that yeah. something you believe? Do you believe we might be in a simulation? Do you have a sort of a theory on this? I saw that and I thought, I have one of my best friends believes this. And I just thought I had to ask. I think, you know, um, I think we all create our own lives so and if it is a if it is that far that, that we are an avatar of our imagination and that we are living this uh, imaginative life as an avatar without even noticing that we are this avatar <laughs> you know then maybe i don't know but <laughs> i do know 
that we are all connected. I do understand that everything is connected in life. And I do understand, you know, I, I also read all those books, you know, I read The Secret and all those, you know, the Law of Attraction books and all that stuff. Mm. I did I, I did ayahuasca many times. So I, I, I do think that I know that, know for sure that we are all connected and you can just, you know, attract positive vibes by, by thinking positive, by being positive. So in that way, you can see it as a matrix, you know, you, you just decide how your life looks. And that's the same as you play like FIFA 98. That's my time of FIFA, you know. If I play FIFA 98, I decide <laughs> what this striker is doing. I decide how I'm defending by like yes. taking control. Yes, mm. it's a physical controller, but I think it's the same in life. You know, you can take control of your own life and steer your life in the way you want to steer it. And if that is possible, so who who is there to tell me that we are not just like and indeed like avatars of the, this bigger energy or imagination i don't know maybe we are even a game of the aliens you know they are playing the control and we are just those yeah. people, people from fifa 89 i don't know <laughs> i just love to read about all that stuff and mm -hmm. i love to compare all the of, of all the all the things because what i do know is that we have been lied to for many years what i do know that all the education that is giving me is not based on the truth. Yes. Like, there are so many things that have been proven that it's just not true that, you know, you need to start questioning meaning things. And I think that's what we show the kids. Question everything. Question, Don't yeah. Don't take things for granted. Think about it for yourself. If people mm. tell you you cannot land an airplane on the south or the north pole because there's a huge hole which is the entrance to the inner earth, you can believe it or you can go there and investigate it. And if you yeah. go there and investigate it, then you know for sure. And if you just read the book of uh, Admiral Byrd's diary, and he tells you, yeah, there is a hole, and the, live, the dinosaurs live still in the inner earth, if you just <laughs> believe it, you, know, you, you have never see the proof, seen the proof. Mm. So I question everything. You know, it's, it's it, Well, it's healthy, but yeah, like you say, at school, you're asked not to question, just to remember and be told, and it's, uh, it's definitely not for our benefit, is it? There is this huge test in the, in the Netherlands, it's called the CITO test, and this is a test every kid needs to do when he's 12 years old. And one year, there was this question, there was a picture of an, uh, uh, how do you say it in English, igloo? Like an Eskimo igloo, house yeah. from ice, mm -hmm. igloo. Yeah. So this picture was there, and then the question was, which color belongs to this igloo? Is it blue or is it red? So a lot of kids answered blue because blue is cold. But there were also kids that answered red because you go into igloos to get it warm. You know? mm -hmm. What is the correct answer? You know, and mm. that, that, that's the thing that I think, you know, if, if you never question things and you take this answer blue for granted, yeah, you, you, you just never educate yourself. You just become this robot that's very good at memorizing stuff. Which isn't so useful. With um, You mentioned earlier uh, ayahuasca. It's something I've been thinking about for a long time. A friend of mine did it because they had anxiety very badly, yeah. and I suffer badly from anxiety as well. And I've, I've been doing a little bit of research into it and, and whether it's something that can help. Is it something that you found was really beneficial? Uh, you, you know, for me, it was really beneficial, and I think it's beneficial for everybody. If, if, you, if you have a big fear of letting go, or you have big problems with letting go, yes. ayahuasca won't do anything for you. You know, I, I advise oh, really? ayahuasca to, to many people, and many people will say online, yeah, it's like a kind of a drug, and it's like this. Yes, you can say this, but did you try it? No, but I read about it, you know, and then I, mm. I sent some people to ayahuasca, and they had the beautiful experience I had. And they were like, wow, did he just change my life? And it really changed their life completely. And mm. some people that were really, you know, they had problems with letting go because you go in this flow, you drink a tea, you lay down, you need to relax, and then you get into this um, this this trip, they call it. Yeah. But there were people that didn't even get into this trip just because, okay. of, because of, the fear of letting go, you know, and so that was the proof for me that it's not a drug because a drug, you know, if, if you use a drug, you get into it. There's no way of stopping it. 
So for me, ayahuasca is, 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 is something very spiritual that needs to be done uh, by a proper shaman. Mm -hmm. And it will just restructure your whole mind and it will open up the problems you had in your past and make you go through with them and, you know, make you understand what happened and will give you this new experience of life and how the world is connected that it will change your life. The first mm. thing, the first time I did it was like, I was, it was mind blowing. I, 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 it was just, there are so many things. It, it, I, I can give you an example, for example. So I was mm. always working. At home, so I was always working on the laptop, 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 and working, working, working. And my kid came to me while I was working. Dad, can I ask? No, I'm working. But Dad, no, I'm working. But Dad, I said, man, shut the fuck up. I'm working. You know, you you know that mm. the people are stressed in work situations. So if you take that situation in ayahuasca, it's translated in this. You're in this ayahuasca trip. Then you zoom out and you see yourself sitting working in, a, in an eagle eye view. And you mm -hmm. see your kid walking up to you and asking you, Dad. And you see your reaction, you know. And then you crawl, you fly into your kid's eyes and you see yourself sitting from your kid's perspective. Wow. And then you see your, and then you see your reaction, please fuck off, I'm working. And then at that point, you feel the pain that kid felt at that moment. You feel that your kid thought at that moment, oh, does dad find this computer more important than me? Is wow. this thing more important than me? You, you, this feeling is being printed in your brain. Mm. You will never ever do that like that again, you know? Because the wow. only thing you want to ask is, dad, can I take a drink from the fridge? Mm. And the only thing would have taken a split second, yes, yeah. take it. And you could have been working again. So ayahuasca translates translates it in, in, into its visual effects for me with this programming of your mind. Mm. And yeah, for me it's uh, yeah, for me it changed a lot in my attitude. It changed a lot in losing your ego. It changed a lot in the way you look at life. So yeah, this is what you mean, I guess, by this uh, connectivity. Then, if if it means that you can see the world through the the eyes of your own child then there's this sort of connected world, like we are all, wow, that must have been quite that, an experience. As if those memories are all stored in one big um, cloud of energy and you can go back into them and feel them. But, you know, I think we all know that it is possible because people that go to a shrink, they don't mm. do the same, you know. The shrink just makes you remember things from the past, you know, a psychiatrist, how you call it, you know. And, and, and this is what ayahuasca does as well. But I, one of those of ayahuasca, like six hours, you know, it's comparable with like 60 treatments by a psychiatrist. <laughs> so, right. um, but yeah, if you ask me, do it and you will see um, um, yeah, how, how it can change your life in a, in a, in a beautiful way. And it's not that you're drugged up or all that stuff with people. So no. yes, some people need to puke. Some people make the shit. I'm a shitty person. So I always go to the toilet. You know? <laughs> but, uh, it's, it's, it's not that you're totally gone. You, you're laying down and if you open your eyes, you're out and you can stand up and you can go have a glass of water or go to the toilet and you go back and you lay down again. You close your eyes, you hear the music and bam, go back into mm -hmm. the beautiful, um, yeah, beautiful journey you're making. And um, yeah, it's, it's, beautiful. it's beautiful. And it can also be painful, let's be honest, it's uh, in a positive way. Well, sometimes you need to see those painful times to move on and change, don't you, I guess? I, it, I think it's needed for some people and because people have bad experiences in life or were misabused or whatever. And then mm -hmm. you need to go through that pain again. But also you can see and, and uh, you know, understand why for example, uh, the per the person that hurted you, why it hurt? Why he hurt it? You know that there was no mean intention. Maybe it was a, a drunk guy or whatever. You know, so all those things it it, mm. it gets sort of a place, and what makes your what makes you what makes it able for you to to move on. Yeah, yeah. It sounds it, maybe it sounds a little bit <laughs> spooky, all but um, no, it is, it's, you know, so many people already did it now, and it's it's getting popular. I still have this domain ayahuasca for all dot com, and I uh, 
ayahuascaforall.com. Yeah, I intend to create a forum on this one where, um, you know, people can uh, rate the shaman, the location, and all that stuff so that people feel more safe about certain locations and certain people. Yeah, that's a nice idea. That's a great idea because it is a little bit of a scary, uh, you know, you don't know who you're dealing with and you don't know where you are. And I think if you have a review, like you say, you feel more secure, more safe. Yeah, that's a nice idea. uh, But I'm searching for somebody that will help me with this because I'm uh, too busy now to create the website and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, somebody will pop up. Maybe after your show. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Well, I'll put it in the show notes anyway. And uh, yeah, if anyone reaches out, I'll pass them over to you. So Didi, listen, I'm, I'm conscious I don't want to take too much of your time and you're with your family. So uh, I just had one more question for you. If you're to look 20 years into the future, when your children are grown up and they're adults and going about their lives and have jobs, what future is it that you would like to see? And, and, and is it something that you think Bitcoin can create for them. Where do you see Bitcoin taking this world twenty years from now? Uh, that's a very big question, and you know, and and, and 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 I need to be honest. I think Bitcoin is just such a little part of what is going to happen in the next twenty years. You know, um, mm-hmm. it's, uh, they, Bitcoin will be the shift in the monetary system. So I think in twenty years' time, we will uh, have this decentralized currency that is used all over the world by everybody and. Everybody has at that point access with their phone or with their watch or even with their uh, lens at that time. You know, in 20 years' time, uh, I don't think we we'll still will be walking around with hardware wallets or telephones. Uh, it, it will be different at that time, I think. And um, but that's only the you know that that's only the, the change in the monetary system. But the world is changing. You know, we see the climate changes. Maybe in 20 years' time, and I even read and and talk with people about that that every. 11,000 years, you know, the, the North and the South Pole are being like shifted like 90 degrees. That would mean that the Thailand and Indonesia would be the North Pole and that would mean that South America, uh, somewhere would be the South Pole. That, that would mean that the climate here will be freezing and mm. the, the Netherlands will be Mediterranean. You know? So I think the next 20 years will be an exciting time. I think a lot of changes will, um, will be seen. But I do know in 20 years' times we are not using um, physical money anymore that that's that's something i'm like two thousand percent sure of that won't mm-hmm. exist nobody will be running around with golden bricks to you know scrap off gold to pay uh, the grocery <laughs> store. yeah that's all going to be gone you know in 20 times years we will have that technology that we can mine gold in the oceans we can mine gold in other planets the value of gold in my opinion is that that's why I don't think the value of gold is that important anymore. Because if we find out that we can mine gold on the planets or on the oceans, and it yeah. is a, like a shitload of gold, what does it do to the value of gold? You know, and that's so, what I see. I see the governments, I see the banks, I see them all slowly understanding the power of Bitcoin, the fixed mm-hmm. supply of 21 million Bitcoins. The last Bitcoin will be mined in 2140. So they know they can control the system if they just believe and understand. It. Mm. And that's what slowly is happening. You know, and, and, and in, in return of this, they need to give back some privacy to us. And I think yes. that's the biggest thing we are going to see in the next 10 years is that we are getting back more privacy because we are now on the top of no privacy. We have zero privacy. Yeah, Everything absolutely. Completely clear, and that's what they, what you can see in China now with the social system. You know, people are even not able to leave China if they don't have enough social points. It's scary. It, it is scary. This is like this episode of Black Mirror, you know, where people yeah. are getting a lot of points. And, and but you know, we need to accept it slowly. We are turning into that. We lead. We let our children turn into those two people as well. And in China, for example, they just do it. They just say we have the social system. You need to do it. But what do we in Europe do? We get our kids addicted to Facebook, to Snapchat, mm-hmm. social media or th- things where they where they think they are important. Where they get a lot of followers. The more yes. followers, the more likes, the more good I am. So. In a certain way, it's also a social media prison that is, you know, we are growing our kids up into. And, uh, you know, I think the government, for example, Facebook knows, knows like 10 times more than all governments do combined. Yes. About my, my kids and all the things we do. Mm. So, uh, 
Yeah, I think Bitcoin will be also very important for this shift in privacy because that's the only way that I can transact in a private way with others. So pri- privacy, freedom, uh, uh, two of the, yeah. You, it, it's, everything comes with cycles. Mm. At the beginning, you're afraid of this, uh, of sharing your stuff on Facebook and, you know, and then it grows and it grows and then and you're like, okay, now I can even share this photo of me and those persons together and then you can even share a photo with, uh, of, you, of yourself naked and, you know, it goes through this cycle and now Facebook is integrated in everybody's life. Yeah. But there will come a time that people are also fed up with it and that they are searching for, um, you know, decentralized applications that don't sell all your um, habits to, to other big companies, you know, and, mm. and that, that do make it possible for you to look back in time. You know? mm. A lot of people use social media so they can look back to last year. Oh, it's the pictures they made, you know, then, then you can create this history uh, of your life, this, this, this yeah. timeline of your life. And, and I think that's the positive part, but it should be, um, it, it should be possible to keep it private and not controlled by any other central company that can do whatever they want with your data. Absolutely. No, that sounds like a beautiful world and I very much hope for that. So uh, let, let's hope we're right. <laughs> let's hope we're yeah, right. Let's hope like 10% of it come out, then we are happy. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Exactly. Well, Didi, like I say, th- thank you so much for uh, doing this call with me. It's been really, really nice to speak to you and my listeners will learn a lot and I will be linking all of your information in the show notes and where if people want to get in touch or want to find you, where's where's the best place? Is it Twitter or have you got somewhere else which is preferable? Um, they, they, they can find me on the, the bitcoinfamily.com or, yeah, I think bitcoinfamily.com or diditaihutu.com, they can find all my stuff and they will find all the links to Instagram, to Facebook, to Twitter. We even have a, uh, how do you call this again? Is it? TikTok or something with the Bitcoin. Ah, oh, TikTok. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, but, but we don't use it much. But we, yeah, we are. Okay. If they Google the Bitcoin family, they will always find us. So, uh, fantastic. We'll all right. And I'll put all the I links wanna, in there. Yeah. Perfect. I want to thank you for having me on your show and I uh, wish you a lot of success with uh, all the next show. And uh, please do let me know when it goes live and uh, so I can share it. And, uh, I will too. Start more people. All right. Fantastic. Thanks, Dee, and have a nice evening. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.